Hello and welcome Velocity Banking students, Kingdom citizens, loyal subscribers, and new people. Welcome. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. And today I have a very special guest by the name of Harrison George, who is with CMG Financial. And we're going to be discussing breaking down the all-in-one loan product so that we Velocity Banking practitioners can accelerate our mortgages or use this product to increase income and cash flow so we can go both ways right so with that being said i'd like to introduce harrison on the screen here how you doing my friend how's everything I'm going? good good denzel thank you for having me on here i appreciate it yes it is a a, a long time coming uh it's been a while since i've done a all-in-one loan product review and, and breakdown explanation so i'm really glad that we connected and uh, just so that everybody knows, we actually connected through a client of mine who has an all-in-one loan product. She absolutely loves it. She emailed me. She was like, you got to talk to Harrison. He's the GOAT, apparently, in the in the CMG all-in-one loan space. You, you know a whole lot about this product. And I think you can provide a lot of really good insight, especially in this environment right now. Interest rates are going crazy. Um, how people can really comprehend this product and formulate it into their personal finances as it relates to either accelerating debt, paying off bad debts, um, rerouting high interest debts to a simple interest revolving line of credit, a big line of credit for that matter, uh, and or using it to increase our income, make investments, leverage, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of different opportunities there. Before we dive into the meat and potatoes, um, because this is the first time my audience is, is seeing you, I'd like you to give a little background just uh, uh, about yourself and how you found out about All in One Loan, how you got into it, and uh, how long you've been involved, and all those details. And then we'll dive right into uh, uh, the meat and potatoes here of this product. Yeah. So, uh, ultimately, been in the lending industry since, uh, you know, 2000. 11, 12 timeframe was in the mortgage company actually at CMG back then. Um, I was working in a completely different department doing kind of more of the uh, disclosures and back end side of things. Uh, and then as I began to understand more and more about the actual mortgage industry, I became more interested in understanding how um, this side worked. Obviously, they don't teach you any of this. Uh, and by this, I mean buying a home in high school or college. So it's kind of like a whole foreign language for me. Um, and so by kind of getting further into the mortgage lending, real estate rental, or sorry, the uh, residential world, I've actually kind of become more and more interested with it. Um, and by understanding more about just the standard mortgage products, we actually had another loan called the All-in-One that was very foreign to me. Uh, and even the individual that had begun to teach me about it, wrote it on the back of a piece of paper with crayon for his daughter. Um, and I still have that piece of paper kind of teaching me about the all in one and the fact that it's not used for any one specific task. It's used for whatever your goals are. And the cool thing about it is like Play-Doh, it can be morphed into what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So whether that's debt elimination or, uh, you know, asset acquisition, you can kind of morph this product into as a tool into what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, so I've been licensed since uh, middle of 2018, uh, and since then, my team and I have helped uh, about 500 or so families since then, um, and um, my team and I were licensed in about 38 states with the intention of getting uh, the remaining states here in the next couple of months. Nice, nice. Appreciate that. Now, can you give a little bit of an origin story on the all-in-one loan product itself? How, how new it is, you know, you said 500 homes. Um, and I know we had a conversation off camera in terms of the amount of uh, all in one loan products sold last year in comparison to the amount of traditional mortgages that get sold, it's peanuts. So it's still a very, very foreign, you know, unknown type of a product. So if you can kind of give us a little origin and really the performance uh, of these products based on the clients using them, how quickly are they paying off their properties and you know, if you can give any data on that, that'd be great. Yeah. So um, this concept, the all in one concept, this um, banking feature with your mortgage, this suite functionality is not new, even in the United States, in the sense that, you know, it, it started here in the, um, you know, the early 2000s in the United States. It's new to people hearing about it. And by that, 
they just end up going, it's a new product. But discussing the product over the course of the entire earth, I mean, this product's very popular over in Europe. Australia and New Zealand, which is kind of where we originated um, the concept of this product, bringing it over to the United States. It's a little different down there, uh, and by any means, I'm not licensed or anything down in any uh, out of uh, out of the country. But it's uh, it, the concept was ultimately kind of taken from there and brought here, uh, and has slowly been imp implemented into our way of thinking for financing a home or even just eliminating debt. Um, and yes, this loan has only had, you know, in comparison to traditional mortgages, just a small fraction of loans completed and closed. Um, but those people, depending on what their goals are, have seen their goals um, really kind of come into fruition or at least have the control of getting their lives in the general direction of those goals. A lot of people end up finding themselves buying a home and then refinancing to get a lower rate and then pulling cash out and they never really end up paying anything off. Uh, obviously, when you pull cash out, you just increase what you owe, but you end up seeing people kind of just stuck at this place. And the only time that they get behind or pay things down is if their home is appreciated so much that they can use that to buy a slightly more expensive home. And that's kind of the traditional way of buying homes. We're trying to flip that around with this product. Right. And, and it would seem like the idea is actually, okay, in the same amount of time that your home would appreciate that you by the time you refinance, say every five, six years, something like that, that what if you could actually pay off the entire lump sum of the of the traditional mortgage itself? What if that could be wiped out in one shot and then rerouted to a different vehicle yes. where you have access to the appreciation right of the property, but you're actually paying it off within five to seven years or less. So now it's done that first property and now you can use all of that equity to acquire your second so now you have a paid off property you get the second one maybe you rent this one out or you move into this home which now you rent the other one and you're creating cash flow which allows you to pay off the next property even Quicker. faster you yeah. know so like in a in a 30 year period you know the average income earner average household uh, uh income in america could probably acquire maybe three four five homes um and, mm -hmm. and depending on what market you're in probably more you know if i'm in georgia i could probably acquire more homes but if i'm in la or new york or new jersey maybe two or three yeah um, and and again subject to the fluctuations of people's income but just you're like you said you're flipping the whole entire script now i don't experience this any longer because of the the amount of uh, growth I had on my on my YouTube channel over the last four years. But in the beginning, when I was introducing this strategy of being able to just simply the, the concept of pay your mortgage off within five to seven years or less literally sounded like a scam. Like that's not possible, right? You can, you can only, you know, if you do the math, right, making extra payments, the home will be paid off in nine years or 10 years or 11 or 12 or 13. So how is it that if I don't increase my income and my cash flow stays the same using the same numbers, how is that possible to pay the property off in less than seven years if, if the numbers are the same, right? Mm -hmm. And it took me many years to like have that conversation and, and, and get people to finally get it. And so I'm no longer experienced that, but I wonder in the, in your space, in the all in one loan product itself, when you're, you know, helping someone get a home, obviously CMG does regular mortgages, yeah. right. And refinances and, and all the other products. So how do you present the all in one loan when people are kind of already in that mindset? I'm just going to be locked in this thing for 30 years and maybe I pay it off five years sooner, seven years sooner, 10 years sooner, but to say, you know, five years pay off, yeah. six years pay off, and actually mathematically show that. How do you get someone to just d so digest? So now it? it's easier. Now it's easier uh, bringing up alternative solutions for individuals. I mean, when interest rates were in the twos and the threes, it was it was kind of like, well, why are you trying to talk about something else when all I want is this? Well, because I still see opportunity, and I'm not necessarily a fiduciary, but I do believe that it's my responsibility to at least educate people. At the very minimum, what I feel like my job is, is I educate people. 
Um, and so what I want to do is educate somebody and say, hey, listen, your two and a half or 2.875 30 year mortgage is a low interest rate. That's awesome. But we're not talking about low interest rate at the end of the day. We're talking about interest cost. And approximately, you're going to be spending 50% of what you borrow in interest at a 2.875. So if you had a $400,000 mortgage, you're spending $200,000 in interest. Well, what if I could say, hey, you're only going to spend $30,000 in interest because of how you earn, save, and how much you have saved, we can use that to actually move your life and advance it forward to actually see movement and momentum in your life. I think the average statistic that we have is, approximately you know most households earn um, enough money in five years coming into their checking and savings account to pay off their mortgage completely approximately so um, what we're saying is well why can't we use that you are going to be spending money on groceries and gas and whatever else you have going on but until you spend that money let's see if we can use it to work for you if you're going to earn your money on the first and you spend your money on the 25th Okay, well, there's 25 days that we can actually use um, that money to offset your mortgage. And by spend your money, I mean, use your credit card, you know, pay your credit card off on the 25th. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that's that's interesting that you say that is in today's environment, it's gotten easier to have the conversation uh, presenting these alternative options, being that, you know, mortgage rates are, I think, 6.25 is is now the the rate they're going higher. yeah they're going even higher now so it's just like i think it's increased what three or four times this year in 2022 yeah. so as we're recording this video in october 2022 mortgage rates are high right and the conversation uh teaching people the difference between an amortized rate versus a simple interest rate just got even easier oh yeah what we can show look at the drastic difference even if the rates are the same you know, or even if the rate is higher, mm -hmm. there's still a massive gain to, to be had. And then the other conversation that is sometimes hard for people to comprehend is being able to um, have your money in a controlled cost environment. Like you're you're now in control of your cost yes. of this when you when you have the, the all in one loan. And the other thing is the opportunity cost with the amount of capital you have available in that tool at your disposal, right? So life happens when you're in the process of paying off debt, an emergency, a medical expense, um, a job loss. So there's a lot of invaluables or intangibles that aren't necessarily in the product, but it's as a result of having a product such as an all-in-one loan, it gives you this this comfort, this security blanket, so to speak, exactly. in the event in the event X Y Z happens. Instead of paying off the debt, you can now pull from what you've been paying down. Unlike making extra thousand, fifteen, two thousand dollar payments each and every month, that two thousand you never see it again in a traditional mortgage. You 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 can't access it unless you what cash out refi right or sell or sell right so but that's like a that's a it's a big event right mm -hmm. and you may not even need all that capital what if you only need 10 grand when yeah I, uh, finance the whole thing versus being able to instantaneously withdraw five grand ten grand on a moment's notice to handle you know an emergency right or life alternating event or whatever the case may be or an opportunity or an opportunity and then simply recover Right. So whether it was for a, an, an, an obstacle or a challenge or an emergency or an opportunity, now that money has been used and you keep the process going of dumping all your income into this product and just having the liquidity, the access, the capital at, on a moment's notice. And so you, there's a lot of flexibility here. So with that being said, I want to I want to take it to the whiteboard now and really uh, break down the components of the product. Um, I've done, a, I've done mul uh, two or three videos in the past. So curious to know if any, uh, changes have been made. So the first thing we'll do is really break down what the all in one loan product is like, what is it composed of? Let's, mm -hmm. let's start there in terms of what it is and, and how exactly, uh, will this work when I, you know, sign into 
my online banking? Like, like what does it look like? You know what I mean? Like, if you can give us yep. a picture of that. that yeah, great. so ultimately the all-in-one is a checking and savings account that just happens to be paired with your mortgage. So you'll have a checking account there, one, two, three, four. Uh, that checking account, for the most part, will always say a balance of zero. And the only time that it won't say a balance of zero is if you actually deposit money that physical day. The way that it works when you're looking at it is you deposit $5,000 into your checking and savings account. Um, and at 1159 at midnight or at 1159, that money goes from 5,000 to zero. And simultaneously your mortgage goes from 300,000 to 295. Um, so you're always going to kind of have this weird feeling like, oh, my checking account has zero dollars and zero cents in it. It's a weird feeling. But then once you look at your actual all in one balance, you go, oh, well now I have $5,000 available in my all in one or 105,000, depending on what you have that line of credit for. Um, you do have some functionalities of linking all of your checking and savings accounts external so you can pay your bills from the all-in-one website to Wells Fargo, to Chase, to whatever um, <clears throat> without having to make it inconvenient. You don't want to transfer money from one bank account to the next bank account to pay your credit cards off. Just simul or, you know, seamlessly pay everything off, um, which is really easy and it's really convenient because now I just go, okay, great, let me pay my cards off. And I don't really kind of mess with anything else. I even have my mortgages coming out of my all-in-one. So I have a few rental properties and it's pulling money out. Um, and I don't even really need to pay attention anymore. It's kind of all on autopilot. I just need to focus on working and, you know, once a month paying my credit cards off. Got it. So recap here, the all-in-one loan literally is... It's a, it's a checking, there's a checking account function, account mm -hmm. and routing number, where that's where I would pay bills out of link accounts, set up direct deposits, right? That's where I can move money. Exactly. The, the savings um, is the line. It's, it's the, the line of credit, correct? Yep. Right, so the line of credit is the available equity in the loan that we financed, right? So an all-in-one loan can be a tool that we actually use to actually, we can actually get a property, right? Initially, exactly. or you can refinance out of a 30-year, 15-year uh, mortgage, conventional, traditional mortgage into an all-in-one, right? Exactly. You can go both ways, right? Um, and so whatever the, so let's say, for example, somebody had a $400,000 30 year, you know, mortgage at a, a say 5%, right? Mm -hmm. This whole 400 grand would go into the loan, all in one loan. The rate will change. Yeah. Right? And the, traditional mortgage itself gets paid off in one shot it's it's no longer there correct right? done um some other things that can happen is uh in, in certain situations some people might have pmi um escrow right and as it relates to the the all-in-one loan product these things also uh go away in terms of like it having to be automatically taken out of that mortgage payment, right? Correct. So the all, in one, the all in one does have an opportunity to do less than 20% down in some scenarios. And that does require a one-time mortgage insurance cost. Um, and then there is no escrow account. We're kind of saying, why would you want to put money, your money into somebody else's account when you could be holding on to it in yep. yours? Yep. And, and that also makes a huge difference. Um, this is something that I, I would tell my clients often is that escrow account, the amount of money that sits there. And I've had multiple, multiple clients, um, have the issue of their escrow being under. So they actually owe more mm -hmm. in, in a certain year. Like I just, it's fresh in my mind right now. I have a client that has an escrow account and they were explaining how they owe $3,400 from last year's taxes. So there was mm -hmm. a, you know, it, it went negative, the escrow account. 
Yeah. So I'm like, number one, you have no control of that. So that means it was a mistake on their end, which now you're paying for. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so the, what, what happened is their mortgage payment increased by over $400. Right. And they have to either come up with $3,400 in one shot to bring the mortgage payment back down or stick to that new increased mortgage payment until it, you know, readjusts back down. That could be a, a whole, you know, complete mess up in someone's finances. Just you're oh, like, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> so having control of more of your money in a scenario like that also, you know, uh, contributes to you paying down that debt even faster. Mm -hmm. Right. Would you agree with that? Yeah, certainly. Awesome. So that is what it is. It's a, it's a checking, it's a savings, it's a loan all in one. So when I log in, I'm going to see, am I going to see one, uh, one account that says all in one, or I'm going to see three separate things. You're actually going to see two. You're really going to see two, your checking right? account and the line and your savings account, which is also your line. It's the same account at the end of the day. Gotcha. So and you like, will do your direct deposit into your checking and savings, sorry, sorry, into your checking account. And then that'll sweep into your savings account. And then at any point you can pay your bills from your savings account. Got, oh, okay. So the checking account will technically always be at zero. Unless if it's, that's the day you physically put money into the account or that's the day you're physically paying money out of the account. So if you put $10,000 or $5,000 into the account, you'll see $5,000 in the account. That night, it'll go from 5,000 to zero. Alternatively, if you mm. pay $5,000, you'll see a negative $5,000 balance in that account so that it can get sent out to wherever your, whatever bill needs to be paid. Okay. So it's like uh, the savings account is like the basket and then um, you know your checking account is the entity that's going into the basket and pulling money out or putting money in. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna illustrate this out for my uh, my uh, my audience here who is uh, they they need it visual right yeah so let's say I have income I make say seven k a month right mm -hmm. and that gets split up into two paychecks thirty five hundred dollars right so let's say today is payday so income in thirty five hundred dollars. Exactly. Instead of that $3,500 going to my Chase Wells Fargo for, for, uh, uh, uh com, you know, convenience, I now have a checking account with all in one, right? Or, or CMG financial that $3,500 gets directly deposited. So I go to my employer and I can set up direct deposit with this checking account mm -hmm. and that $3,500 where it, where it first lands is in the checking. Correct. Correct. Boom. We stop right there. So that's money going in lands into the checking, just like any other bank. Right Correct. now from there, it's say it's, um, eight, nine o'clock in the morning today. That's when I typically see the paychecks, uh, come okay. it's fresh, right in the morning, eight or 9 AM. All right. So from, from there, does the checking account automatically now send the 35 to the savings or will that happen at 11:59 p.m at night yes so it'll happen at 11:59. so then at 11:59, your balance will go from 3500 to zero and deposit that money against what you owe on your mortgage okay now does it make a difference if i wake up at 8 a.m and move the money myself into the line or, or well not? you 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 I can't, it does it automatically. Does it automatically. Automatic. You don't have the ability to transfer the money into that, that moment. It'll do it itself. It's and it doesn't matter if it goes in at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning or 1159, because at midnight, your payment is calculated on your balance. So the course of action is at 1159, it moves all money in. And then at midnight, it calculates your payment for that day. Gotcha. The next day, right? Correct. Yeah. At midnight. Uh... Okay. But yeah. So, you know, the first moment in the morning, it's going to go, oh, now your balance is not 400,000. It's, it's 396, 500. Right. Now let's okay. calculate payment. Okay. So 1159 money moves 
from checking mm -hmm. and so we'll write checking to savings correct slash line slash line okay at 11 from from there let's say the the day i got paid right which was today mm -hmm. eight o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. thirty five hundred dollars came in but that just so happens to be the same day that i have a thousand dollar uh, a monthly payment to make towards some other debt let's just say correct right does that thousand come out of here the savings i mean essentially yes it would but the way that you would see it is it would just then change your 3500 to 2500 but yes it would come out of the savings and go to directly to pay off whatever you need and that 3500 would go in but when you're looking at the portal it's just going to look like twenty five hundred dollars because gotcha. that thousand dollars is just going to be a negative thousand yeah and that's critically important um especially when i am, am working with my clients um typically when we deal with say a uh, a personal line of credit or or a second lien heloc these are some other common tools that we use for uh debt debt acceleration i often tell them that your your ploc or your heloc is separate from the checking account, whereas an all-in-one, it's together. So you don't have to worry about moving money in and out. But when you're dealing with a personal line of credit or a home equity line of credit in the in the second position, it's literally separate. So when that 3,500 hits your checking account, I tell them in the morning, as soon as you wake up, you need to manually move that 35 into the P-lock so that it registers that $3,500 went into the line of credit. Mm -hmm. Then from there, if you so happen to have a bill on the same day you receive your, your paycheck, say a thousand bucks, what I don't want to happen is $3,500 sits in the checking account and then by two o'clock that thousand dollar automatic payment went out. So now you only have 25 and then you transfer 25 to the P-Lock. That would be incorrect because you just lost out on a thousand dollars uh manipulating the cost of borrowing on the p lock right mm -hmm. so just to be clear that's not that is not what's happening here in the event thirty five hundred dollars hits my checking account eight nine in the morning and then at like 12 one o'clock i have a thousand dollar payment that gets automatically you know i set up bill pay let's just say automatically comes out it'll show going from 35 to 25 in that day but technically $3,500 still went into the savings line itself. Yes. And and so it'll, so let's say it was at 400K at eight, nine in the morning, the savings, the line itself, what I owe, 400 is is, is the balance owed, right? And then it's, it's not gonna show, but $3,500 went in, right? Or it'll, it'll go in by midnight correct well so. so that's where it's really specific it comes in at 11 59 and then midnight is when your payment is calculated so it's the order of operations right and thir so 35 goes in and i have a thousand dollar payment mm -hmm. by 11 59 p.m my actual balance should be 397 500 is that correct Correct. yep gotcha and so it, it registered 35 went into the line. It registers that no matter if I have a, 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 you know, money coming out as money's coming in, you know, cause Correct. I got like you know, auto, auto bills and automatic bills set up. So I don't have to worry about that. So that, that saves a, a, a major, uh, a headache, right? trying oh, yeah. to figure that out that's that does save time when i'm dealing with people with p locks and helocs there's a methodology there's a discipline that we must have um and we must be aware of when money's coming in and out uh so that we don't miss out and i often will educate my clients hey see if you can move that automatic bill instead of it hitting on the same day you get your your paycheck that have that bill come out a day later two days later right as this, late as possible really right or as late as right, as far out as possible from when money's coming in this way it manipulates that rate but again we don't have to worry about that here in Correct. this scenario so money came in thirty five hundred dollars boom hits the checking early in the morning let's say by midnight that thirty five hundred is going into the line and if i have any any automatic bills or, or, or payments you had mentioned that it's actually coming out of the line not the yes check. correct that's where your routing number and everything's going to end up being to where you're paying uh, money at. so then this was this was a, a incorrect right 
Well, so it goes from your savings to your checkings and then gets paid out of your checking. That's how it, it pulls. That's what I'm saying. Your checking is like the entity grabbing the money, moving it into the checking, which is going to be the pulling it out. Which then pays the bills. Correct. So it, I, it's kind so of- I had that right. I yes. had that right. It is kind of like both, I guess, at the end of the day, sure. um, based off the order of operations, because your money is not in your checking, it's in your savings, but the entity that's pulling it out is the checking is the checking right because you need to have a uh, account and routing number to pay any bill that cannot be paid with a credit card correct right so and let's just go into the the credit card now that we just threw that in there if i have a credit card that i can run my groceries bills uh phone bills subscriptions anything and everything that could be paid with a credit card i can attach or or link the credit card to my all-in-one and mm -hmm. my all-in-one automatically pays the statement balance on the due date of that credit card each and every month this way i never you have to set it up but you can do that right do that correct you can go in there and set up your payment schedule beautiful all right so bill pay we're linking accounts right and this is the flow once it's set up that you're done once you've set up bill pay once you've linked your accounts you're done you literally don't have to worry about um when your paychecks come in that's automatic mm -hmm. Money out that's automatic paying bills that's automatic saving money that's automatic right so this becomes um your your ultimate strategy uh your ultimate foundation strategy uh, arguably where instead of having a savings account right or an emergency fund or sinking funds these are all the terminologies people use right to save money or plan for um, bills like annual bills and expenses mm -hmm. or if you're an envelope person people who stick cash in envelopes that's like that's archaic in my mattress opinion. Money. Yeah, yeah mattress money this is this is old guys we got to really you know this is how you truly pay off debt that much faster even if numbers are the same it's about how you move money you're creating a velocity you're increasing the velocity of your money right and when you do that even without increasing income you actually pay off debt faster if all numbers are the same right yeah. so let's just talk about the safety real quick before we get into how much it costs and how to qualify yeah um talk to us on the safety of this tool because some people might say okay um this is a mortgage loan that's what they're comparing it to this is like a mortgage loan so what happens if um all in one or, or cmg or whoever i'm banking with calls my loan right w what is the likelihood of them uh freezing my account or reducing my line of credit access or uh just completely calling the loan and that's why i need to have money outside of the all-in-one in my emergency fund or, or sinking fund account like yeah talk to so about that. even even during 2008 from my understanding no line was ever called no line was ever curtailed or the amount that they had access to was reduced it was um ultimately kind of that safety net for the people that had this loan to actually um exist you know if both people lost their jobs they'd still have that access to their funds um even when values in some of these states went down massively they still didn't reduce that line of credit so compared to you know your checking and savings account it is your bank account um now i don't have a crystal ball and can't foresee everything so it's possible that world's falling apart then sure there could be some opportunities where they may actually ask for something that uh, would change everything but from the understanding that I have and from the communication I've been uh, communicated with uh, from the internal team, no, we haven't really seen any of that um, reduction or curtailment or anything take place. Gotcha. And the the other thing to keep in mind is when it comes, and we're going to get into the how we qualify and the costs, mm -hmm. when you're looking at this product, an all-in-one loan, to even qualify, there's standards, right? So cool. the all-in-one loan, CMG Financial, the, the, the company as a whole is really pre-qualifying people's actual finances and their ability to actually use this tool, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like um, banks are, are like how other banks are handing out 0% mortgage loans to people who don't even qualify. Like mm -hmm. that's a sign of 0708 happening again 
where we're, we're seeing banks giving loans to people who don't even qualify, right? Or they just barely made it with their 650 or 680 credit score, right? And they have just enough space in, in cash flow, you know? Um, and so, which would mean that any event, any life event over a thousand bucks would destroy that family, right? Mm -hmm. $1,500, 2000 whatever it is would totally mess that whole family up and now they're in forbearance and now boom 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 and that's how things actually happen right so if it's a what we're saying here is there's so much safety in the product that what would have to happen is the world would literally need to collapse right and at that point you're no longer worried about paying your mortgage it's more yeah. like okay um do i have guns do i have food do i have yeah, gotta, gotta it's, go it's a different Girl. conversation right do you I have bad. water food and shelter yeah. right so putting that aside just just going over like okay if a recession happens if another COVID happens if a uh market downturn you know the dow drops tremendously if in my city state real estate crashes for those types of things that are more likely to happen and will continue to happen because markets go up and down or, or sideways right that you have no reason to worry about your all-in-one loan product getting called or reduced on the line because of how the product is initially built, the safety features in it, the pre-qualification process, et cetera, et cetera, and the comprehension of the customer. Like, exactly. especially if they're listening to me, listening to you, you guys are actually showing them how to mathematically wipe this out mm -hmm. and then and then use it, right? Not just don't use it again and just pay it up, but actually use the thing to create more cash flow vehicles, right? So all that to say, Hey, there's safety in here. Um, it's safer than a traditional mortgage, you know, arguably safer, even if the rate is higher, Correct. right? That's what we're saying here. Okay. So with that being said, uh, let's dive into qualifications, right? How do I mm -hmm. qualify for the all in one? What do I need to have? Yeah. So, um, and I'm going to kind of be discussing based off of primary residence. We do offer this in investment and second homes, but primary residence individuals um you know we're going to need to see anywhere between a 10 and 20 percent down for their purchase or a 10 to um 20 percent equity position in their home if they the okay, hold on so 10 to 20 percent down correct okay so that's been the same because i remember doing this video about a year or two ago so that has remained the same so 10 to 20 percent down required right on a new home Correct. If I have an existing property with, you know, let's use that example, 400 grand is what I have owed, but the property is worth 650. Mm -hmm. What, how much money do I quote unquote need to qualify for this? Well, so if you were refinancing a home, again, we'll need to see it between a 10 and a 20% equity position. So if your home's valued at 650, um, in reality, you could owe 585 on your home and still be able to refinance into this product. Okay. Okay. So there only needs to be about 10 to 20% of equity space between um, what is owed and what the value of the property is. Correct. By doing that, um, again, between 10 and 20%, you will need um, to overcome the challenge of mortgage insurance, um, which is going to be a one-time fee to the individual. And that's based off of what your loan to value is in your credit score. There's a graph. And, and can that get factored into the all in one itself, or does that need, need to be paid out of pocket? It depends on what they owe, right? So if they owe at that, if their value is 90%, or if they owe 90% of the value, well then yes, they would need to come out of pocket. But if they- Because there's no space uh, to work with. Correct, exactly. But if they owed, uh, you know, their loan to value was 82%, okay, then great. Let's factor everything in. Let's get it all paid for. Gotcha. So 10 to 20% down if I'm acquiring a property and I want to get the all-in-one loan prop, uh, product on a home I just saw. Like I want to buy this home, I need 10 to 20% okay. down to use the exactly. all-in-one loan product. If I have a home already, I need 10 to 20% in equity. Exactly. Beautiful. On, on top of that, I mean, the easy one to get after is credit score requirements. Depending on um, where you're at loan to value wise, it's between 700 and 720. Okay. So credit score as low as seven, but preferably anything above 720. Correct. So if you're, if your loan to value is, 
not a 20, you know, if you're doing 15% down, then we will need to see a slightly higher credit score. Yeah. And uh, what bureaus are you guys looking at? All three or is it just one? Well, yeah, we look at all three of them and then we take the middle number. So we throw out the high, we throw out the low and we use the middle number. Beautiful. So you take all three credit bureaus and you use the middle one. So if I have a 750, a seven and a 735, you're taking the 735. Correct. Beautiful. Gotcha. And then again, depending, so th this next one is kind of like a, a two parter. We're kind of diving into two different of the guidelines, but um, your debt to income ratio needs to be below 43% debt to income, preferably below 40. And the reason why I'm saying there's two different ones is debt to income ratio at 40 and below will need 10% of your total line of credit in reserves. And if it's between 40 and 43, we need 15% in reserves. So what I mean by that is you have a $400,000 house, or sorry, you have a $400,000 uh, or $500,000 house and you have a $400,000 line of credit, 80%. Um, if you're at 40% or lower, you'll need 40 grand outside of the transaction, checking, savings, stocks, bonds, 401k. If you're between 40 and 43, you'll need 60 grand checking, saving stocks, bonds, 401k. Ah, all right. So that's that's healthy. That's uh, again, not everyone can do that. So this is one Correct. of the niche type of products where where we're overqualifying people. But from my understanding, we've never had a foreclosure on this product. There were thousands of people using it. No, not one person has foreclosed on it. Um, and uh, that's kind of really a testament to saying, hey, look at these people can show that they have the ability to save. They have funds outside mm -hmm. of the and, and it gives them that kind of safety net, but it also adds qualifications on our, our end. Hey, this person's safe. They got good debt to income because even 43% right. still really attractive. Yeah. So um, you need to have between 10 and 15% outside of your line, your equity. In, exactly. In, property, um, in comparison to what is what is owed. Is that correct? No, uh, or what's available in equity? Yeah, so whatever your total line of credit is. So if you owe 100 grand and you have a $500,000 house, you get a line of credit of up to 80% or 400,000. We would require that you have 40 to $60,000 in reserves outside of the transaction. And reserves is not a HELOC. A lot of people go, well, I, I'm doing the same thing you're teaching or you're showing me, but kind of the rudimentary way. Um, and so then there's some hurdles associated with that. Gotcha. So 10 to 15% in reserves outside of any line of credit, right? Exactly. Cause I know some of my clients are going to be like, oh, well I have a 40, $50,000 PLOC. Can I use that? And, and, and I mean, that count. Uh, based off of just the regular guidelines, unfortunately, no. Right. Um, but there are ways for us to kind of, again, build game plans on helping individuals, um, yeah overcome that hurdle, especially if they're investing their money mm -hmm. because we and can use stocks and bonds. So if these people are slowly investing money in stocks or bonds, um, then we can start actually using that account that they're investing this money as their reserves. Okay. So if somebody wanted to be slick, cause I already know it, my clients are like that because I've pretty much built them up to essentially be very effective with every single dollar, especially uh, access to capital. Uh, especially as I'm teaching them to move all their savings, all their money into their debt tools as they're paying off debt. And then the moment that they want to upgrade to an all in one loan, because that's the type of people that you'll typically be working with, especially mm -hmm. with, with my audiences, um, especially with my clients who will likely most qualify are my existing clients who have a personal line of credit for 15, 20, 50 K, right? I've seen as high as 60, 70 K. Uh, credit lines, or they have a second position uh, HELOC on an investment property of some sort. Mm -hmm. So if somebody takes that 30, 40 grand, or maybe they have, maybe they have 10 to 15,000 in savings and they only need another, you know, 30 K to show for, but they have a 50 K P lock. If I pull 30 K out, that's going to increase my DTI, right? Correct. It would, but would it register upon application, right? So if I, apply for the all-in-one loan, right? I'm, I'm being the most finesse slick type of person here to see if I get through the cracks of, of all-in-one because I want to make sure my clients don't try to do that mm -hmm. and they get denied, right? So that's why I'm going through it. So, cause I already know how they think. 
So it's, I, let's say I have a $50,000 P-lock. I've got 10 grand in savings. I've got no 401k, no assets, right? Just 10K in savings. Um, and I pull 30 out of my P-lock right after applying for the all-in-one. I give you all the information. I got the credit score. Um, my DTI is good, right? It's it's within the, it's in the under 40%, let's just say, as of mm -hmm. right now. And I apply. Then I pull out the 30K to show you I've got 40K in savings, right? What would you say to that? And let's say you didn't even know that they did that. You just well, I would find out, right? Because we'll out. need bank statements, and I'll see. Okay, their balance was ten thousand in October, and then in November it went up to thirty thousand. I'll see the deposit go in. I'll right. go. Okay, it came from this. I see that on your credit report or wherever you pulled the money from that the balance had then increased. We're going to need to source that, especially thirty grand. It's not a small amount of money, exactly uh, by any means. So there again that's where it's uh it's nice to have conversations with people and just be ultra transparent hey yeah. this is what we need to do okay well then let's build a game plan so we can get you into this this loan's perfect mm -hmm. for you you're just missing this requirement and the cool thing is is that since we created this loan we have some flexibility on it to go okay you know this person and it's not like we have the most ultimate flexibility but we have the flexibility of saying hey let's look at the person not treat it like a 30-year mortgage where they just kind of look at it as a number hey, everyone's kind of treated as a number we we try and look at it as an individual on in an individual basis. Gotcha. So based on that, with those of you who are watching and my clients watching, be slick, but not that slick. Right? <laughs> that's that's the whole idea there behind. That's why I said that, because I already know some people are going to try and do that and they're going to shoot themselves in the foot when they could have just had a very transparent, open, honest conversation with you. Right. Yeah. You have to work, you're working with someone else on your team to know that, hey, we're looking at you as a person, not a number on an application, right? We want to get the, we want to understand the whole you of your finances, because this is the type of product that you're going to have for a long period of time, mm -hmm. right? It's a 30 year open line of credit. Exactly. So there's a lot that we can do together. Uh, you being the, the, the loan officer and me being their financial coach, there's so much synergy and, and, and synchronization that can occur over the next 10, 15 years, especially if you plan on being in this space as your, yeah. as your main thing. And then me as well, I plan, I don't plan on doing anything else other than, yeah. other than this. So it's like, you've got those securities, plus you've got the product that's helping you do all these things with your finances so let's not shoot ourselves in the foot let's prepare let's what i call do pre-game work if we have to wait six months three months to be best positioned for the all-in-one i would rather mm -hmm. them do that than try to force you know the approval process right it has to come in due time so with that being said i'm um, just coming back 10 to 20 percent down to qualify have a if you have a home then it's 10 to 20 percent in equity and there will be some uh, a one-time mortgage insurance expense right less than 20 percent less than 20 percent okay credit score 7 to 720 preferably anything higher you're, you're in the green there mm -hmm. dti um if it's at 43 percent to, to 41 or, or 40.1 Mm -hmm. there will you'll need to have 15 percent in reserves and if it's under 40 percent then it's 10 percent in reserves exactly. in comparison to the amount of um uh, uh equity in, yeah. the, in the in the home that we're getting right so if it's like you said if it's a uh what is it? if it's a five hundred thousand dollar property and 80 percent would be four hundred thousand so that would be the credit line yep right you need to see 40 to 60 K. Exactly. And what's the percentage on that? Was that 10, 15%? Yeah, 15. Okay. Boom. So that's that right there. This way my clients get that. Cause I know they'll get confused. They're like, wait, what? So that would be your example. So you guys would plug in your numbers. So whatever the value of the home is in comparison to what is owed. And so you have a hundred K in equity, right? From there, that's 80% LTV, right? Exactly. So for those watching, then you would take times it 10 to 15%. You're going to get 40 to 60 K. That's how much money you need either in a 401 K, a Roth, uh, an IRA, a pension, uh, or, um, I don't Box, know. Bonds, yeah. Yeah. TSP stocks, bonds, CDs, uh, does crypto count? It does not. So the, the, the okay. real requirement is accessible funds. So I do know that some IRAs, some. 
TSPs don't have full access to that money. As long as they have access to the funds, we can use it. Unfortunately, crypto doesn't work. There have been times that um, I've seen people who are, um, you know, have had the opportunity to borrow against their crypto because crypto is pretty much just anti-bank in the right. long and short of it. Um, and what they've done is they borrowed, I guess, against their crypto and they, we had to hit, you know, we'll, we would need to hit the individual for a payment, but that's if you're ultra qualified, of course. Yeah. So if I had hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin, I take a cash loan against that, a collateral loan. And now I have that cash sitting in a CD or, or a savings account. Or money yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of extra steps to get involved with that, but ultimately, cause then we would need to hypothetically hit them for that payment of this loan. Gotcha. And even in the, some of the cryptos are like, well, you could pay this back whenever and the interest rate is this, but you can mm -hmm. pay it whenever and you have no payment. So it's very loosey goosey on that side of things to where it's, let's look at the specifics associated with where your money is, see how we can get access to it. What's right. the cost and go through the legal, you know, circus of uh, using it. Gotcha. So it's safe to just say, guys, crypto doesn't count. Yeah. It's easier to say that. It's easier to say that. Gotcha. So now let's dive into uh, the last component here where we talked about what the all-in-one loan is. We talked about the origin. We talked about the flow, how money goes in and out and how that's pretty much all automated. We talked about the safety in the line itself, right? And that would make someone feel comfortable moving emergency funds or sinking funds or your cash envelopes or your savings accounts all into the line. And that money is there whenever you need it, but it's also manipulating the rate that you're paying. So it's reducing your borrowing costs. We went into how to qualify. Is there anything else we missed in, in the qualification process? Um, no, not really. I mean, it's, there's just, there's a lot of creative, um, information that can be done on the back end, depending on, you know, what you're trying to do that can always be discussed, uh, at a later time or even with an individual, obviously, um, there is kind of an unspoken rule that, um, I like to kind of go by that if you retain approximately I like to say at least 15% of your income um, on a monthly basis. This is something that is an appropriate product for you. If you're starting to say, hey, I retain 20 or 25% of my money or more, then I think that there's some really big opportunities for you to not only leverage that uh, in the sense of, hey, let's invest it and let's also utilize this loan um, and kind of do both. both, do both of investing and eliminating debt kind of at the same time um, to have a net win over just doing one or the other. I like where you're going with that. I like, we'll, we'll, we won't dive too deep into that. That'll have to be another session for sure. Yeah. We get an actual case study and maybe we'll reach out to my client that you actually helped. Yeah. Um, and because I know she's doing that. She's investing, she's a business owner. And she's knocking debt. I mean, she's on a she's on a roll I, I, over the last few years, just really hammering away at her financial goals. So we'll save that for another time. Let's. So th those are the main qualifications, right? Yeah. And and then that other little uh, thing that you mentioned there. But now let's go into. We'll, we'll finish things up with cost. What does it cost to get an all-in-one loan product? And let's stick to just the residential. Um, and we'll probably do another separate video on investing, um, and in terms of what it, what it costs on an investment property, or if there's a difference, mm -hmm. um, but we'll just stick to residential for now. Yeah. So I guess it's, uh, it's pretty standard mortgage costs. So there's different variants to the loan programs. Now there's a, um, a there's two fixed products and then there is a regular monthly adjustable. Oh. So depending on the you guys, you guys do offer fixed rates now. Yes, we are offer a three year fixed and we offer a five year fixed. And then after that point, it becomes adjustable. So that's kind of where it's depending on what this person is really trying to um, solve and really trying to do. Hey, I'm going to keep the property for this long. Their goals is where we're going to start discussing different ones. Um, you're going to start seeing costs fluctuate from, you know, as low as uh, no cost, depending on the margin that they um, choose all the way up to potentially a 2% cost of whatever they are initially drawing. So the costs are not based off of your line. It's based off of what your initial draw is. So in that scenario where this person mm -hmm. has a $400,000 line, let's just say they owe a hundred grand. Okay, great. The costs are going to be based off of a hundred grand. Okay. So if it's a 1% cost, then there's a $1,000 
cost to them to choose this program with the specific margin. And that's, again, there's so many different variants to choosing, okay, well, do I choose this product, the three-year fixed with this margin? Okay, well, then that cost is going to be here. Does it make sense to do that? Where do we anticipate rates to be in the next three years? Um, are we able to kind of slightly hedge that, um, you know, what we think may be coming up in the next several years or months? Um, or do I want to go with a longer and safer play of going with a five-year fixed with a reduced cost, but a slightly higher interest rate? So there's a lot of yeah. variables. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, um, let's talk about the different interest rates on the three-year, uh, five-year and variable. What are those okay. currently? So the, and that's the current rates this month. And that's where it kind of depends on what margin we're picking. And, I, and I'm looking over on the, my other screen to have that, those rates pulled up. Um, those rates change on a monthly basis. And I'm going to kind of give you kind of three breakdowns. The monthly and the five-year fixed are going to start out at the same interest rate. The three-year fixed has an introductory rate between 0.5 and 0.75 lower than where the five-year would start at. And by doing that, that's actually going to be a slight increase in cost. But the way that it kind of works out is it's about a two, two and a quarter year break even. So it does mathematically make sense for the right people to choose that three year fixed with the slight increase in cost because they're going to end up saving substantially more with that reduced interest rate. Um, and to give you kind of a breakdown right now, um, the regular um, three or sorry, the regular monthly adjustable is at just um, the, with the regular three and a half margin and there's on the monthly adjustable, you have access to choosing different margins from two and a half all the way up to 3.75. Um, that interest rate is 7.48, which is the, the same interest rate as the five year fixed in the month of October. Okay. So hold on, hold on. So you were going over the variable one. Yeah. Variable is 7.48 this month. Okay. And the thing about this loan is interest rate is not the most important thing. Now, yes, it's obviously very important, but that retained money on the end of every month, that Correct. is really the- Yeah, I, I can turn 7.48 into less than three in some cases oh, yeah. with a lot of exactly. my clients. So um, the three year, where are we at with that? So that is going to be between 0.75 and 0.5 lower. Then so that will be, yes, exactly, from that number. So it'll be either 6.73, yeah. Uh, to 6.98. Gotcha. And then the five years a little bit higher, right? It's the same as the variable this month. So 7.48 is where it would start at, but it would be locked in at 7.48 for five years, as opposed to the variable that will change on the first of next month. Gotcha. So if I was looking at this, me personally, I would probably not feel comfortable with the five year because I'm going to make a bet that the rates are going to come back down. But, um, I would also, as a client, as a, as a, as a prospect, I would want to get, get some additional opinions or insight mm -hmm. on, you know, where, where are we, where are we looking? Cause I, I can definitely assume if we go from Democrat to Republican interest rates are going to go down. I, I would definitely be, you know, uh, uh, I could see that happening. The, the lack of that, that, you know, like a, a switch in administration. Okay. Rates come down. Cause usually that party's more focused on, you know, money and, uh, infrastructure and kind of like jobs and different things like that. Where more of a Democrats, more socially responsible and kind of like kind of seeing the, what has been happening based on history, right? Mm -hmm. What we, so if it went to Republican administration, uh, arguably rates would go down. So I would probably want to lock myself in the three year. But if I think that, no, we're on a path to ultra, uh, no, we're on a path to hyperinflation. Arguably we're already there. Um, mm -hmm. and it, and it will stay there for quite a few years. I'm already seeing content on, you know, mortgage rates going up to 10% or higher, you know, the likelihood of that and what it would do to our economy. Right. So is it, is it safe to have those kinds of conversations with clients to, to understand why would something go up? Why would something go down? And to be able to make that analysis to help someone make the, a, a decision on whether to go with yeah, five, I mean, year, it, fix, five year or variable. It certainly does. And, and I think that I'm in agreement with you. I don't necessarily think that we're going to be um, able to sustain where we're at now for too long right. um, without seeing that kind of rotate on the other end. And I think that that safety net of locking in for three years is a good way to kind of 
hedge that change. Um, and also depending on the person's scenario, three years could be a large chunk of debt elimination in their house so that, you know, if things didn't go out the way that you were anticipating it to go, um, you still had that big, big safety net, a right. much lower balance because, you know, if you had a 10% interest rate hypothetically on a $50,000 balance, well, okay, well that's manageable. Um, nothing. nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's manageable, especially at a simple interest, as opposed to, you know, a 10% interest rate on a million dollars. Exactly. Be and, and again, for those who are watching again, don't be afraid of the rate because 10% on 50 K can easily become less than three, right? Mm -hmm. Easily become less than 4%. So you're, you're comparing it to where you're currently at and understanding that your four, five, 6% amortized mortgage is more like double that rate in actual costs. When you're, when you're looking at the life long of it, it's, it's way more, right? Exactly. Uh, so what are you seeing people? settle for in my opinion i i it would seem the three year is the most attractive one 6.73 three years lock that in 6.73 i can turn that into less than three i can cut that in half with most of the the numbers especially again we're dealing with people who do save money do have mm -hmm. discipline do have good credit scores do have existing assets 40 to 60k not too many people have 40 to 60k access and available so we're already in a higher income category uh, uh, already with, with that being said. So that's where for my clients that are listening, that 6.73 is actually very attractive because we can manipulate that, especially the higher the income you have, the, the lower we can manipulate that rate on a month to month basis. So let's say you lock in the three and then come elections, it switches over back to Republican and then rate starts to drop. Let's just say it drops a point, two points. And now you're at a higher rate than what the, the normal rate is. Mm -hmm. We're okay with that because boom, it's about to expire in a year. Exactly. I mean, and, and, even drops. and on top of that, I mean, if we're seeing it do this and you lock in here and it goes up and then elections come, you're going to not just see it go straight down and then go below where you locked in. You're going to have that bell curve coming back down. So you may be at that perfect point to where right as it crosses that apex, it falls off to monthly and you're coming back down into lower and lower interest rates. And let's do the reverse. Let's say we stay Democrat rates keep going up, right? You locked in a lower rate for three years. You knock down so much debt in the line itself that if the rate is now jumped to eight and a half percent, nine percent, your actual borrowing cost is still less than four. You can still cut it in half, less than four, less than three on the 100K remaining or the 75 or 50K remaining on the debt. Even if it's a quarter million, it, it's still very manageable. Um, and then it's just a matter of time or it stops and then starts Correct. to come back down. It has to eventually come back down. At some point, yeah, you would uh, think. At some point. So it would seem like the three years the most ideal option. Um, let's keep going in terms of the uh, other cost included. Yeah. Um, so so ultimately, um, you have standard title fees, which, you know, depending on that individual, um, you know, it could be, I'm going to go from like kind of low to high and three to 5,000, uh, depending in some scenarios, you, know, you could do a plus or minus on both sides of that, but just normal title fees. And then, yeah, if you're in New York, uh, it's like, more than that more than 5k right uh it's pretty expensive I would, no, I'm, not, I'm not licensed in new york not yet oh, okay 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 yeah, yeah yeah i just had a client his closing costs on a first lien heloc was eleven thousand plus dollars or something like that so it's wow. insane. well closing costs and title fees are different title fees are not closing costs you know you're talking about paying your homeowner's insurance for the full year. You're talking about oh, okay. paying that, you know, that 1% to 2% of whatever your line amount or your loan amount is going to end up being, um, you know, you may end up uh, in a purchase scenario, which uh, is people kind of always get a little tripped up on this. There is a holdback of money. And what I mean by that is if you were to go to Wells Fargo right now and go, Hey, I want to open up a bank account. They're going to say, give us a hundred dollars so we can start your bank account. That concept is the same thing that takes place in the all in one, except you're just doing it at 1% of whatever your loan amount is. So if you have a buying a home for 500,000, you're putting $100,000 down, you have a $400,000 loan amount. We're going to take four grand 
at closing and go, great, we're going to deposit this into your account right away so that there's funds there available for access instantly. And mm, I see. Uh oh, I think we're still we're live. Yep. We're still good. We're still good. I cut you off for just a second. So repeat um, the last five, 10 seconds. Repeat that. Yeah. So ultimately, if you, uh, you know, have a $500,000 house and you're buying it or you're refinancing and you're at these same numbers, um, you have a $400,000 loan amount. Well, we're going to go and say, hey, to start this account so you can have access to it, we can create it right away. We're going to have you deposit 1% of whatever that loan amount is. So $4,000. So you're going to go you're gonna have your normal closing costs and then you're gonna have $4,000 of your own money going into your own checking account that you'll still have access to, but we're just starting it in day one. Gotcha, you're starting people off on a good on a, on a good good note there. So that exactly. makes sense. All right, so title fees anywhere from plus or minus three to 5K and then there's the closing costs, right? It's separate. Which, yeah, I mean, and, and that's the-, the and That's gonna vary. Costs, like, you know, CMG's fees uh, this month just above um, you know, today and on in October, uh, and have been they're about seventeen hundred bucks for CMG's figures. That's, that's then, plus or minus, right? That's like seventeen. I believe it's like seventeen and some change, and that's fixed processing and underwriting fee. That's fixed. Gotcha. That's a fixed cost processing and underwriting for the product itself. Closing. Correct. Right? So no matter how big or how small the line is, that's a fixed cost. Correct. Okay, cool. And then in year two onward, there's a $60 a year cost for the account, um, which is relatively negligible um, in the long run, but that's kind of the access to the uh, to the individuals because you can call whenever you need to call that sweeping function, all that. Yeah, so it's just that one one-time cost annually. Right, after year two. Yeah, starting in year two. Okay, what else? Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, obviously you're gonna, Pay your homeowner's insurance um, and a one-time lump sum on, in day one uh, when you close um, on a purchase. If you've already paid for it on a refinance or through a refinance, and that's not included, and that's that's kind of it. It's those figures, and then that depending on the program and the the margin you choose, you have that between a zero and two percent cost. Gotcha. So the the mortgage insurance part, you're no matter what type of um, rate option I choose there is a upfront mortgage insurance cost you have to pay for the whole year. You just pay one time, correct. Yeah, so just that's only time. available on the monthly and the five year. And depending on what your loan to value is and your credit score, there's a graph. And that could be at, you know, at low of a cost of 0.4 all the way up to a cost of, you know, one and a half. So and so, yeah, if it's 0.4 to 1.5%, yeah. 1 one-time mortgage, mortgage insurance costs, that's that's separate from homeowner's insurance, is that correct? Correct. Mortgage insurance and homeowner's insurance are different, correct. Right. So it's just a one-time cost, then you don't have to worry about it ever again. So it's not a continuous cost. Correct. And then you pay your, whatever your previous homeowner's insurance plan was, mm -hmm. you're still on that. You don't require people to get something different, you know? And mortgage insurance is only for 10 to 19.99% down. It does not take place on 20% or more. Okay, gotcha. So if I have 20% or more down, that is not, not an expense to worry about. Correct. 20% or more, zero. Am I? Correct. Okay. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Nothing else. No other hidden fees. Nothing else I got to worry about. Uh, I'm not going to get blindsided. This is this is the this is what it is. Correct. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this has been very very educational. We went very very deep. Uh, a really good deep dive in the numbers here. Really appreciate your time today. What we will do for the audience here is we're going to have uh, another session. I'm pretty sure you're more than happy to, to come back and we can yeah. maybe go into because I know all in one loan has like a software that you mm -hmm. plug people's numbers in and kind of show them what to expect before even getting the product. Right. Cool. So I think what would be cool is if we actually will we'll get a case study. I'm going to reach out to that uh, specific client that actually introduced us to um, use their numbers and actually like walk through the process as, as if they were a brand new client. Okay, this is step one. Okay, this is step two. Okay, here's how we show the numbers. Okay, here's the software, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll explain what I do on, on the back end with that client, how I'm coaching you through the process. Because yeah. what can happen is, and I'm pretty sure there's 
people who have all-in-one loan products that are not a client of mine they don't have a financial coach or or strategist in their in their inner circle so to speak and they simply just don't know how to really use the concept um or really maximize the product right and um you know cmg's job is really to provide the product and kind of show how to how to how to use it but there's more that yes. needs to be yeah, a continuous a continuous touch on that specific person so that they can get the most value out of it and that's where a guy like me would come in with all this content and the coaching and the programs and courses and things like that kind of how that all comes together really really nicely so we'll go through that as well okay um but today was really just like here's the meat and potatoes here's what it is um and it's you know the most updated uh video because i have not really seen a whole lot of content out there on all in one which um you know it's it's shocking um so i'm excited to be the person that is just pushing it out there showing people hey here's another tool in our yeah. tool belt as we're practicing you know velocity banking is what we call it. it's the marketing term um some people call it paycheck parking or mortgage acceleration debt acceleration um is there a specific term you guys use in uh, uh your your space all in one line I mean, velocity velocity banking is kind of along along that lines of what's ultimately using i mean we're just we're i i don't have any specific saying but i just say it's the hyper efficiency use of your dollars i like that hyper efficiency use of your dollar hyper efficiency use of your dollar i like that that's very very clean professional um velocity banking that's easier some people yeah it's easier <laughs> and then at the same point it still has a negative connotation in the marketplace today if you sir if you google velocity banking you're gonna see probably three or four negative articles that have <laughs> ranked on top one of google and then right below that you'll probably see a guy like me <laughs> and so i'm i'm i'm, I'm slowly beating it um, so take some more time, but the, the conversation has really lightened up over the years where people are like, oh, wait a minute. There's some history to this. Europe's been doing it. Like you said, Australia, UK, they, they call it offset accounts mm -hmm. and they're paying off their mortgages in under 10 years, under eight years. Okay. That's interesting. How yeah. boom, here's, here's our products. It's called all in one first lien, HELOC, PLOC, credit cards, right? These different tools. Um, so thank you again. Is there a way, um, I'm sure we'll have a link, uh, that we'll, we'll drop in the chat. I'll make sure, uh, people can get a hold of you, uh, mm -hmm. for those that are ready to take that next step. The, the last thing we didn't cover was, um, where all in one loan is available. Is it available in all 50 states or is there some limitation? Yeah. So it's available in all 50 states, um, purchase refi, primary, second investment, and it, there are some unique restrictions uh, along the lines in Texas, but it is now available in Texas. It which was is awesome. right, right? Correct. Ago? Yeah, okay. that's pretty recent. Several a couple months ago, it's just got it, we just have access to it. So um, that's really, really attractive. Texas for primary residences. Let me specify that because it was available in Texas for investment properties, um, but now it's available for primary residences and everywhere else. Yeah, there's no problem doing it. Got you. So at one point, so back then it was available in Texas, but only on investments. Correct. Now it's available on investments and primary. Exactly. Texas. Okay. This is great because there's a, there's a, a another, uh, product called first lien, a first lien HELOC. And oftentimes the first lien HELOCs in Texas have this, um, $4,000 minimum withdrawal limitation on every single transaction so it can kind of it follows those it follows that same oh it does okay procedure correct gotcha but then there's still like not a whole lot of options um it, there's a limited amount of mm -hmm. products in texas where a lot of my clients can you know get these tools at their disposal so now that we know all in one loan is available in texas and in all 50 states so yeah. for my viewers, this will be really good if you were looking at another bank or another um, product, like uh, for example, First Lean HELOC with, with First Savings Bank, that's another um, very similar product to All-in-One Loan. They're only, uh, they're not available in Texas, Maryland, or Hawaii, right? So for those people in Texas, Maryland, Hawaii, boom, All-in-One Loan would be your next best bet if you're looking for a first lien right exactly. you're comparing it to 
other banks and other other products and that such. So I think that was really important to cover that. So thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Awesome. Have a wonderful day. God bless everyone and tune in, check the links below to get a hold of Harrison um, and start your process with all in one. There isn't a cost to have a conversation with a guy like yourself. There's no cost to, you know, run through the software and a strategy. So that's, you know, really transparent. They're working to help you get best approved. And you're even willing to say, Hey, this product's not for you. Right. Oh, certainly. Yeah. We want to build a game plan. Hey, you really want this product? Okay. Well, let's go through this. Let's acquire a homo. You only have five, 3% down. Okay. Let's do this. Let's build the game plan and let's get you into this product in two, three, five years, however long it takes. Awesome. Thank you again. God bless everyone. Talk soon. Thanks guys.